Hello and welcome to Y24 News Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from around the world. Tuesday evening, plenty of action ahead, and these are the headlines. Chelsea will host Galatasaray tonight in the Champions League, an emotional homecoming for Didier Drogba, who led the Blues all the way to the title in 2012. We look back to the top five goals of the weekend. Beautiful free kicks from Holland and Germany are in. Two goals from the Camp Nou are in, but who is the number one? Is this the proof everyone was looking for? Documents suggest millions were paid to a FIFA executive in return of awarding Qatar with the 2022 World Cup. And the new baseball season will start this weekend in a surprising location. The Sydney Cricket Ground has become a baseball field. Hello again and thank you for joining us. We are live from the Jaffa Port. Four teams already qualified to the Champions League quarterfinals. Two more will join tonight. One of these coming from Stamford Bridge. The tie here is completely open after the first game in Istanbul ended with a 1-0 draw. Chelsea are seen as favorites. They host the game and they scored a goal away. But there is a lot of pressure on Jose Mourinho and his players, especially after the loss this weekend in the Premier League against Aston Villa. The Turkish champions know they will have to score at least once, but they also know they can do it. Manager Roberto Mancini will hope for a good game from Didier Drogba on his emotional return to Stamford Bridge. Drogba himself will put all the emotions aside once the game begins. I have nothing to prove to, to this club. Uh, everything I had to prove, I think I did it with, with Chelsea. And uh, no, I come here with, a, with, a, with another team. And I just want to win the game. I just want to qualify. And there's nothing personal against Chelsea. Never, there will never be. So there may be a question as to who will qualify from this match. No such question from the other match. Real Madrid beat Schalke 6-1 in the first game in Germany, meaning the players can have fun with their own version of handball. The Merengues are more than all focused on the challenge that awaits on Sunday. That is when Barcelona comes to the Bernabeu for the Clásico. Schalke has no real chance to qualify, but that did not stop their fans from making the trip to Spain. That is what being a real fan is all about. Manager Jan Skeller hopes his team can give those fans something much better than they did in the first game. Fear is not a good word in football. As I've mentioned, it's a learning process for the youngsters to play here. It's moving forward, it's learning. We will try to make the most of it and we'll see what happens. But we are going to give our best and to try to make sure we don't suffer the same result that we did in the first leg. So two more teams will join the Champions League quarterfinals tonight, where they can meet Barcelona, among others. Whoever faces the Blaugrana in the next stage will have to deal with Leo Messi, who is back to his scoring, scoring form once again. This past Sunday, he became the all-time leading scorer for Barcelona, just ahead of the Clásico against Real Madrid. Or rebound with the story of yet another great accomplishment for the Argentine superstar. Some players have done it all and some players are still setting records. Lionel Messi has made his mark in almost any possible competition, and now he officially enters the record books, setting an amazing accomplishment. In Barcelona's home match against Osasuna, Messi scored a hat-trick. Not unusual for the Argentine, but his second goal in the match was the one that put him on top of the team's all-time goal-scoring list. Messi now stands all alone with 371 goals, two more than previous record holder Paulino Alcantara, who was the club's all-time pichichi for 87 years. At the young age of 26, Messi achieved an amazing feat, which took him only 10 years to do so. This adds to an ongoing list of awards and accomplishments that just gets bigger and bigger. Six La Liga titles, three Champions League titles, three-time Ballon d'Or winner, and that's just the icing on the cake. You name it, Messi has probably won it. After returning from injury in January, Messi has scored 14 goals on all fronts. However, one goal he did not accomplish. Cristiano Ronaldo. The 2013 Ballon d'Or award, which went to his biggest rival, Real Madrid's Cristiano Ronaldo. The Portuguese superstar is having so far a better season, scoring 25 La Liga goals and leading his team in a close championship race. But like Ronaldo, Messi has another goal to fulfill, leading his country to a World Cup title. With the world's biggest tournament starting in less than three months, Messi needs just one more championship to establish his resume as one of the all-time greats. Winning the World Cup with Argentina on Brazil's home turf would be something legendary by all means. But for now, 
Messi has at least three other goals standing in front of him in Barcelona, battling Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid for a tight championship title hunt, facing Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey final, and last but not least, reclaiming the Champions League title after a three-year break. One thing is for sure, no matter what the results will be, Lionel Messi has achieved at least one amazing record, which will be hard to break in many years to come. Now it's time to look back at the top five goals from this past weekend. Here we go. Number five comes from the Netherlands. The game between Feyenoord and here in vain was scoreless until this perfect free kick opened the score. Good former scoring the four Feyenoord, delighting the crowd in Rotterdam. We always love to see these beautiful shots. Down to Argentina for number four. Argentinos Juniors came to Boca's Bonbonera Stadium. The home team was on the verge of winning for three minutes from time. Leonardo Pisciulici nails an exceptional shot. One touch outside the area, no chance for the goalkeeper. One all was the final score. Anderlecht has been quite disappointing this season in Belgium as they are far from the title race, but there's so much potential in the team from Brussels. They beat Ostend 4-0 and goal number three is our number three. Look at Alexander Mitrovic stopping the ball, gently chipping over the keeper and in. Beautiful touch by the striker from Serbia. Leo Messi, as we have seen, got all the headlines in Barcelona's win over Osasuna. But apart from his hat-trick, the Blaugrana scored four more goals. Two of them get our number two spot. One is Iniesta's long-range strike in the first half. The other is Teo's shot in the second. They sure look ready for the Clásico. And number one coming from the team that seems to be the number one. Bayern Munich can clinch the Bundesliga title as early as this weekend. Bayer Leverkusen is one of only two German teams who were able not to lose against the Bavarian machine. But that was back in October. This time, Bayern did get the three points courtesy of Bastian Schweinsteiger and his free kick barely touching the crossbar and gently sliding in. Many eyebrows were raised when Qatar was awarded with hosting the 2022 World Cup. Allegations of corruption and bribery were widely spread but never proven. Is that about to change? Documents appear to show a senior FIFA official and his family were paid millions by a company controlled by a former Qatari football official shortly after the country won its bid for the World Cup. Jack Warner, the former vice president of FIFA, appears to have been personally paid more than a million dollars from that company. Other documents suggest additional payments totaling almost $750,000 were made to his sons. His latest allegations, investigated by the FBI, will raise even more questions regarding FIFA's decision to award the Persian Gulf Emirate with the most important tournament in the world of sports. NBA now and the Brooklyn Nets may have had a dismal start to the season. Jason Kidd, Jason Kidd's team looking very good these last couple of weeks, almost securing their spot in the playoffs. The team from the Barclays Center are now 8-2 in their last 10 games and 14-6 and in their last 20. And when you have veteran and experienced players like Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett and Jason Terry in your squad, you know this is a team that will make a lot of noise in the postseason. The Phoenix Suns, who are on the hunt for a playoff spot in the West, gave them some hard time in the first half. Gerald Green with the explosive dunk made it a six-point game in the second quarter, but Brooklyn's victory was never really in doubt. Deron Williams was a top scorer with 28, also adding four assists, this one to Mason Plumlee. After the break, the Nets did the damage from outside. Joe Johnson does it first, then it's Paul Pierce. Brooklyn scored 9 of 21 from downtown. The Suns gave up, and the Nets secured their ninth straight home win. Final score, 108 to 95. Ball players have, of course, a role on the pitch, but they also have one after the game ends. As role models, many players participate in off-pitch activities. Jeremy Lin, for example, joined the efforts to collect old electronics, as well as books, shoes, and clothing at the Houston Rockets Recycle Fest on Monday. The Rockets Recycle Fest is an annual event hosted by the team aimed at creating awareness for recycling with the players occasionally participating. Yao Ming took part in Recycle Fest back in 2011. We're staying with American sports but far away from America. The new baseball season will begin this Saturday and the first game will not be played in Yankee Stadium or Wrigley Field but in Sydney, Australia. The Sydney Cricket Ground turned into a baseball pitch and will host the opening game of the new season featuring the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Los Angeles Dodgers. The game is just a part of the league's effort to get more markets interested in the MLB. 
And this is also an occasion to celebrate the first baseball game that took place in the Sydney Cricket Ground. The Chicago White Sox beat the New York Giants in an exhibition match held here back in 1914. Moving to tennis and to world number seven, Thomas Berdich. He's a national hero in the Czech Republic, part of the Davis team that won two consecutive titles, but he has be, he's not been so successful on the individual tour, especially when it comes to Grand Slams. Berdich has not won any of the big four tournaments. He made it to the final of Wimbledon once in 2010, and he believes now is the time to do the extra step. Well, the next goal, yeah, and definitely to bring it uh, one better, one higher. That means the one from Wimbledon, and uh, you know that's that's definitely my main goal for the rest of my career. But uh, really, that's a that's a really big one, and you need to really work hard for that daily daily hard uh, hard job, and uh, that's what I'm gonna try to do. Cycling time now as we head to the sixth and penultimate stage of the Tirreno Adriatico in Italy. This is the 49th edition of the elite cycling race known as the Race of Two Seas, which follows a route between the Tyrian. Spain's Alberto Contador started the day as the man to catch in the overall classification with over a two minute advantage over Colombian Nairo Quintana. It was a beautiful day for cycling, but not even the sunny weather could prevent a big crash, bringing down several riders along the road. Mark Cavendish took the advantage and finished first in a time of 4 hours, 16 minutes and 15 seconds, claiming his second win of the season and, even more important, sealing his victory with a kiss. We like to say that sports should be separated from politics, but we know very well that in reality, Sports and politics are strongly connected. This is the case with Russia, Ukraine and Crimea. There, there may be sports on the pitch, but the tense political situation is on everybody's minds. Crimea's rugby team prepare for an interestingly timed clash against Russia. The friendly is only one day before Sunday's referendum, when Crimeans decide whether to break free from Ukraine and opt to join Russia. An unlikely coincidence, perhaps, but the Crimean coach, for one, is taking a stand. I am defending my position despite everything that is happening around. Everyone has their opinion. I could wear Russia colors or in other countries, but I am proud that I live in Ukraine. But pro-Ukrainians like him seem to be in the minority in Crimea and most expect the poll to be a foregone conclusion. It's two weeks since pro-Russian authorities were installed in the parliament here, and forces loyal to Moscow are already effectively in control of the peninsula. Preparations for celebrations for joining Russia are well underway, while some went out for some last-minute campaigning. These leaflets say that people of Sevastopol are part of the Russian territories. These leaflets encourage people to tell the entire world that there is no war and that we want to become Russian. Back on the rugby pitch, the fight is also one-sided. Neither country is known for its rugby prowess, but Crimea's players are all amateur while the Russians are professionals. They rack up the points with a half-time score of 40-17. The scene looks set for a rout by Russia, but the Crimeans start running in the tries and the match ends on an improbable 59-59 draw. We hope that our friendly relationship will always endure. Russia and Crimea are united. The Russian players say they're looking forward to helping Crimea up its game in the future. The message is clear. This isn't so much six nations, rather one nation. Winter in the Northern Hemisphere is almost ending. Spring is just around the corner. Winter sports enthusiasts enjoy the few more occasions left for them. One of these occasions was the Arctic Challenge in the Norwegian capital, Oslo. There were two sessions of snowboarding, each taking an hour, allowing snowboarders to use one for free expression, and the other was a full run. Danny Davis won the event in Oslo, but more important for him is the overall win of the Arctic Challenge for this year. You can be sure the American will be back to defend his title in 2015. And we will end our show tonight with the most romantic race there can be. We are talking, of course, about wife carrying. 
The town of Dorking in the south of England is usually a sleepy destination, but it came to life when the annual wife carrying competition dropped for a visit. The rules are pretty simple, carry your spouse to the finish line 380 meters away from the start line as fast as you can. Spouse we say because it may be called wife carrying, but the rules specifically say the duo does not have to be married or be a male and a female. The competition was fierce and right on the finish line, Rich Blake Smith and his wife Anna made sure the trophy stays in England, narrowly beating the Lithuanian rivals who came in second. Good for them. That's it for today. Thank you for being with us. Don't forget you can watch us anytime on our website at i24news.tv. We'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great day.